And the Lord God said unto the woman, What is this that thou hast done? And the woman said, The serpent beguiled me, and I did eat. And the Lord God said unto the serpent, Because thou hast done this, thou art cursed above all cattle, and above every beast of the field. Upon thy belly shalt thou go, and dust shalt thou eat all the days of thy life. And I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. It never seems to amaze me on how clueless many people are when it comes to the kingdom of darkness and his beast culture. The Most High said he will put enmity between the serpent seed and the woman seed. Enmity is defined as the state or feeling of being actively opposed or hostile to someone or something. Enmity in the scriptures is defined as a perpetual hatred. If everyone is honest with themselves, they will acknowledge that the two species of mankind have been at odds with each other from the beginning. When you ask the other species of mankind, what is the reason for the hostility against the indigenous black people? They don't have a legitimate reason. All they know is that they hate the indigenous black people. It should never shock the indigenous people of the serpent seeds diabolical ways. The way the indigenous people respond to the hostility from the other species of mankind reveal that the indigenous people have no knowledge about the world they live in. Due to their lack of knowledge, Satan is deceiving and recruiting the indigenous black people into his army to fight against the very God many indigenous black people believe they are serving in religion. But they are the spirits of devils, working miracles, which go forth unto the kings of the earth and of the whole world to gather them to the battle of that great day of God Almighty. Revelation chapter 16 verse 14 said, It is unclean spirits that are loose on earth, working miracles such as sorcery to gather the people to battle on that great day of Gog and Magog. The book of Revelations reveal after the thousand year reign, Satan will be loose and he will go and deceive the people all over the world once again. Israelites do not confuse Satan's army that is called Gog and Magog in the book of Revelation and Gog in Ezekiel with Japheth's son Magog and his descendants. Magog is referencing the land. The indigenous black people have a habit of naming cities and land after their names. These are the families of the children of Japheth according to their cities and languages. When they were scattered after the tower, and they called their cities after their names and occurrences. And these are the names of all their cities according to their families, which they built in those days after the tower. Naming a city or land after their name was the indigenous black people way of marking their territory. When Mizraim descendants left images of themselves on their walls, that is their way of revealing who they are and marking their territory. The serpent seed has taken over every land on this earth and renamed the lands. For example, the land of the north is known as Europe, and the eastern part of the land of the north is known as Asia. The motherland was renamed by the Romans to Africa. The continent of Africa is known as the land of Ham in the scriptures. Israel also came into Egypt, and Jacob sojourned in the land of Ham. By knowing the biblical name of all the land in this world would inform the indigenous black people of the land inheritance they received from the progenitors of the three bloodlines, Sham, Ham, and Japheth. The Most High divided the earth by distributing all the lands to Noah's sons. Japheth inherited the northern regions of this world. Sham inherited the middle regions of this world. Ham inherited the southern regions of this world. The promised land is in Shem's territory and belonged to the Israelites. Ham's son Canaan stole the land and that piece of land is known as the land of Canaan. Despite the land belonging to Shem, the land was named after Canaan. 
The Most High said to Abraham that he will give him the land of Canaan to his descendants for a possession forever, which is known as the promised land. And I will give unto thee and to thy seed after thee the land wherein thou art a stranger, all the land of Canaan, for an everlasting possession, and I will be their God. The Most High know the promised land belonged to Shem. However, Yah called the promised land the land of Canaan. Oftentimes in the scriptures, the people that are controlling a land are not indigenous to the land. Today, the converts dwell on the promised land and their people control the land. Remember, the Israelite heritage is not a religion. Nobody could convert to become an Israelite. The 12 tribe is a family clan, one bloodline. The real owners of the promised land are the Israelites. The serpent seed has taken the promised land for themselves and assumed the identity of the chosen people to maintain control of the land. The indigenous black people do not control the land they inherited from their forefathers, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. Today, the serpent seed control all the land in this world. The serpent seed increased its population by planting its seed in every land they conquered. The scripture said in the book of Ezekiel that Gog is the chief prince in Mishash and Tabal. Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I am against thee, O Gog, the chief prince of Meshach and Tubal. In the book of Ezekiel, when the Most High prophesied against the leader of Magog, the scribes who translated the scriptures shortened Magog land name to Gog. In addition, they added prince to differentiate Gog from Magog. Son of man, set thy face against Gog, the land of Magog, the chief prince of Meshach and Tubal, and prophesy against him. It is important for you to investigate the separation between Gog and Magog. In the book of Revelation, Gog and Magog appear to be two large armies against the people of the Most High. Israelites, it is important for you to know that Japheth did not have a son named Gog. Japheth had a son named Magog. Magog land is called after his name. The sons of Japheth, Gomer and Magog and Madai and Javan and Tubal and Meshech and Taras. The book of Ezekiel is revealing that Gog is a person or power that will be in control in the land of Magog. Oftentimes, prince in the scriptures are spirit beings, not a person. Remember when the two angels went to Sodom to carry out the Most High's judgment against the city of Sodom and Gomorrah? The angels took on the likeness of men. And there came two angels to Sodom at even. And Lot sat in the gate of Sodom. And Lot, seeing them, rose up to meet them. And he bowed himself with his face toward the ground. Angels are spirit beings, and they can take on the likeness of people to operate in the physical realm. The scripture said, be careful on how you treat strangers because you may entertain angels unawares. Israelites, do not confuse Magog, Tubal, and Meshach, Japheth's sons, for the demonic powers the scriptures are speaking of. The battle of Gog and Magog is prophesied for the end times. The book of Revelation revealed that Satan is the one that will deceive the nations and gather a vast army to fight against the people of the Most High in the Promised Land. And when the thousand years are expired, Satan shall be loosed out of his prison and shall go out to deceive the nations which are in the four quarters of the earth, Gog and Magog, to gather them together to battle, the number of whom is as the sand of the sea. Japheth's sons, Magog, Tubal, and Meshach, passed away a long time ago. It is not Magog's descendants, the son of Japheth, fighting against the people of the Most High in the coming battle. The scriptures say Gog, the chief prince, would gather a large army. And thou shalt come from thy place out of the north parts, thou and many people with thee, all of them riding upon horses, a great company and a mighty army. The scriptures is letting us know that Gog is an evil spirit that is controlling the land of Magog. Gog is another name for Satan. Remember, Satan is a fallen angel. He can disguise himself just like the serpent seed disguised themselves to deceive the indigenous black people. The scriptures said they take many forms. And Uriel said to me, 
Here shall stand the angels who have connected themselves with women, and their spirits, assuming many different forms, are defiling mankind and shall lead them astray into sacrificing to demons as gods. Here shall they stand till the day of the great judgment in which they shall be judged till they are made an end of. And no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Therefore it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness, whose end shall be according to their works. Don't be surprised when spirit beings take on the likeness of men to carry out their deeds in the physical realm. To operate in the physical realm, a disembodied spirit need a human suit. We are spirit beings. Our spirit is living in our human body. Death occurs when our spirits separate from our human body. Unclean spirits can take over a person's body as well as the animals. Remember when the demon legion asked Yahshua to enter the pigs? The book of Daniel revealed when the Most High sent his messenger, an angel, to give Daniel understanding of his vision. The messenger said to Daniel, he was held by the prince of Persia. The prince of Persia was a demon. Michael, the scripture said, was a chief prince, came to fight against the prince of Persia. Then said he unto me, Fear not, Daniel, for from the first day that thou didst set thine heart to understand, and to chasten thyself before thy God. Thy words were heard, and I am come for thy words. But the prince of the kingdom of Persia withstood me one and twenty days. But lo, Michael, one of the chief princes, came to help me, and I remain there with the kings of Persia. A prince in the scripture is a spirit being that could come from the kingdom of darkness or from the Most High's army. The archangel Michael was called a chief prince, just like Gog is called a chief prince. The chief angel Michael is loyal to the Most High. The book of Revelation revealed how Michael fought against Satan and his angels. The result from that battle, Satan was cast out to the earth. Michael is a chief angel in the Most High's army. And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon. And the dragon fought and his angels and prevailed not. Neither was their place found any more in heaven. The spiritual powers that will rage war against the people of the Most High in the battle of Gog and Magog is the kingdom of darkness. The father to the tares, Satan, will gather the serpent seed to battle against the people of the Most High. We can boldly declare that the serpent seed has taken the identity of the indigenous black people all over the world. The serpent seed is making life a living hell for the indigenous black people with their barbaric ways. The scriptures reveal to us in the book of Enoch how violent the seed of the serpent is to themselves and to other people. And the spirits of the giants afflict, oppress, destroy, attack, do battle, and work destruction on earth and cause trouble. They take no food, but nevertheless hunger and thirst and cause offenses. And these spirits shall rise up against the children of men and against the women, because they have proceeded from them. What righteous people would unleash biochemicals on the people to test their evil inventions? In addition, create mandates to force the people to take something against their will. Who would brutally murder an indigenous black person and take a selfie in front of the body for the world to see many generations later? If that is not the power of darkness operating in the other species of mankind and the so-called leaders of this world, I don't know what is. The scripture said, we wrestle not with flesh and blood, but with powers and principalities and spiritual wickedness in high places. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Today, the face to all nations is the other species of mankind. They love to assign to the indigenous black people false identities. When the indigenous people reveal their bloodline, they are quick to refute the indigenous black people and claim it's impossible for the indigenous black people to descend from any other bloodline outside of Ham. 
I am not sure how can the original people, the only pure humans, descend from one bloodline. Facts doesn't matter to the serpent seed. If they are in control, that is all they care about. The serpent seed will cling to their delusions. The Most High did say he will send them strong delusions. And for this cause, God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie. The scripture called the lands we dwell on by their original names. We are living in the beast system. The kingdom of darkness has changed everything, making it difficult to locate the original places in the scriptures. That is why there are controversies surrounding bloodlines and the locations of important landmarks in the Bible. The serpent seed has whited out many nations. Once you are whited out, you are no longer indigenous. You are now a member of the serpent seed. The word prince is letting us know we are dealing with a spirit being. Japheth's son Magog is not leading the war. Satan is. Satan will allow the world to believe Magog and his descendants are the mastermind. Know this, Israelites. The Most High is not the Elohim of the dead. Therefore, he will not use dead people in his army. I am the God of Abraham, and the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. God is not the God of the dead, but of the living. The kingdom of darkness use dead people to deceive you. When the kingdom of darkness use your dead relatives and loved ones in the spirit realm, Satan is trying to gain your trust. Your dead relatives, associates, and friends you see in the spirit realm are masquerading evil spirits. The scriptures refer to them as familiar spirits. Remember when the woman of Endor brought up Samuel? We know Samuel passed away. That was a familiar spirit taking on the likeness of Samuel to deceive King Saul. That is why the scriptures made sure to inform the reader that the woman had a familiar spirit. Now Samuel was dead, and all Israel had lamented him and buried him in Ramah, even in his own city. And Saul had put away those that had familiar spirits and the wizards out of the land. Then said Saul unto his servants, Seek me a woman that hath a familiar spirit, that I may go to her, and inquire of her. And his servant said to him, Behold, there is a woman that hath a familiar spirit at Endor. When you see the likeness of your deceased loved ones and friends in the spirit realm, it is demonic powers behind their faces. It is not, let me repeat, not your relatives or friends that is speaking with you in the spirit realm. The Most High will not use the dead. Know that the likeness of your dead relatives and friends comes from the kingdom of darkness. The scripture said in the book of Ecclesiastes that the dead do not know what is happening in the physical realm. But the living know that they shall die, but the dead know not anything, neither have they any more a reward. For the memory of them is forgotten. When the scriptures identify Tabal and Mishash and Magog in the battle of Gog and Magog, that is the serpent seed that has taken on the identity of Japheth descendants. Because we know Japheth and his sons are long gone, their land has been taken over by the kingdom of darkness. We all know the land of the north is where Satan's seat. We know the serpent seed come from the land of the north. For several months, the Most High has been revealing to his people how the serpent seed has stolen the identity of the indigenous black people all over the world and live as the descendants of the original people for many generations. The Most High is making the truth known in the awakening. It is important for the people of the Most High to know who their enemies are. The Most High repeatedly said in the scriptures that his people, the Israelites, are in captivity in the land of their enemies. And so return unto thee with all their heart and with all their soul in the land of their enemies, which led them away captive, and pray unto thee toward their land, which thou gavest unto their fathers, the city which thou hast chosen, and the house which I have built for thy name. The battle of Gog and Magog, also known as the battle of Armageddon, is the kingdom of darkness gathering a large army from all over into the land of Magog. This army consists of the serpent seed and indigenous heathens who accepted the beast culture. The scripture said Gog and Magog army is as numerous as the sand of the sea. 
The Most High said, broad is the road that leads to destruction, and many are on that road. Enter ye in at the straight gate. For wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction, and many there be which go in thereat. The Gog and Magog war takes place after the tribulation and the thousand year reign. The scripture said, Satan will be released from his prison. Once loose, Satan, known as Gog, will gather his army to fight the Israelites. At that time, the Israelites are back on the promised land. The Gog and Magog war is the final war where the Most High destroys Satan. The scripture said the Most High destroys Satan's army with wrath and fire, just as he did with Sodom and Gomorrah. It shall come to pass at the same time when Gog shall come against the land of Israel, saith the Lord God, that my fury shall come up in my face. For in my jealousy and in the fire of my wrath have I spoken. Surely in that day there shall be a great shaking in the land of Israel, so that the fishes of the sea and the fowls of the heaven and the beasts of the field and all creeping things that creep upon the earth and all the men that are upon the face of the earth shall shake at my presence and the mountains shall be thrown down and the steep places shall fall and every wall shall fall to the ground. And I will call for a sword against him throughout all my mountains, saith the Lord God. Every man's sword shall be against his brother. And I will plead against him with pestilence and with blood. And I will rain upon him and upon his bands and upon the many people that are with him an overflowing rain and great hailstones, fire and brimstone. Thus will I magnify myself and sanctify myself. And I will be known in the eyes of many nations, and they shall know that I am the Lord. And they went up on the breadth of the earth, and compassed the camp of the saints about, and the beloved city. And fire came down from God out of heaven, and devoured them. The scriptures went on to say that the bodies of Gog fallen army will be buried in a place the Most High is reserving in Israel. And it shall come to pass in that day that I will give unto Gog a place there of graves in Israel, the valley of the passengers on the east of the sea. And it shall stop the noses of the passengers. And there shall they bury Gog and all his multitude. And they shall call it the valley of Haman Gog. Israelites, it is important for you to know who your enemies are and the subtle signs that reveal to you the hour we are in. Knowing about the latter days should not be a mystery to the people of the Most High. The Most High is making known what will transpire in the latter days right now in the awakening. The Most High also revealed the end from the beginning. Declaring the end from the beginning and from ancient times the things that are not yet done, saying, my counsel shall stand, and I will do all my pleasure. Religion makes it appear as if the battle of Armageddon, Gog and Magog, is about good versus evil, or about the people that are saved in religion. Israelites, the final battle is about the kingdom of darkness, the serpent seed, coming against the people of the Most High, the Israelites. The scriptures reveal Gog is coming to fight the Most High's people. According to the scriptures, the Israelites are his people. They are the people Yah will gather from the four corners of this world and place them on their own land, the promised land. The strangers that cleave will join them. For the Lord will have mercy on Jacob and will yet choose Israel and set them in their own land. And the strangers shall be joined with them and they shall cleave to the house of Jacob. The battle of Gog and Magog is the last battle between the serpent seed and the woman seed. Remember, the Most High said in the book of Genesis, he would put enmity between the two seeds. There is no reconciliation with your enemies. The hostility is ongoing until the end. Do not let religion tell you about your Elohim. The world do not know him, nor could they speak for him. They can speak for the God of this world, Satan, not the Holy One of Israel. The Most High said he is the Elohim to Israel, not the world. Tremble thou earth at the presence of the Lord, at the presence of the God of Jacob. There are many Israelites in the awakening assigning to the serpent seed bloodlines that do not belong to them.
The other species of mankind who many mistake for Esau has no regards for the indigenous people, regardless of their bloodline. The other species of mankind do not target Israelites only. They are hostile towards everyone, including their own people. Enmity will cause you to behave this way. There are two species of mankind, the indigenous black people, the human species, and the non-indigenous species. The Most High did not say he would put enmity between the woman's seed and a specific bloodline. Yah said the serpent seed. And I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. Esau and his descendants are a bloodline. I have heard some people claim Edom is spirit. Where in the scriptures does it say that? This belief is no different from the spiritual Israel false doctrine. Do not mistake family fights with the serpent seed's wickedness. The Most High is not saving the wicked nor the serpent seed. He made that clear throughout the scriptures. The Most High is preserving a remnant of Edomites. The Most High always has a remnant that is called by his name. The Most High charged his people to not hate the Edomite. Thou shalt not abhor an Edomite, for he is thy brother. Thou shalt not abhor an Egyptian, because thou wast a stranger in his land, that they may possess the remnant of Edom, and of all the heathen which are called by my name, saith the Lord, that doeth this. It's time for the indigenous black people to stop letting the kingdom of darkness and its beast system tell their story. Do not let your enemies instruct you on what direction you should go. Allowing your enemy to guide you will cause you to become an enemy to the Most High. Many indigenous black people say they love the Most High. However, many of them have a membership in Satan's army. You can't be for the Most High and your ways align with the beast culture. Israelites, you are living among your enemies. Wake up. Becoming one with your enemies is not going to fix the perpetual hatred. Yahshua said they hate him without a cause. If they hated Yahshua, you are his people. They will hate you too. Many of us before the awakening were clueless about the root cause to the hate we received from the other species of mankind. But this cometh to pass, that the word might be fulfilled that is written in their law. They hated me without a cause. The enmity between the serpent seed and the woman seed will not end until the appointed time. The scriptures reveal the serpent seed and the woman seed fight until the very end. The battle of Gog and Magog will put an end to the enmity. The indigenous black people must understand this and make better choices. At the end of all this, the kingdom of darkness lose. It is good to know the end from the beginning. That way you can make choices that will put you on the winning side. Israelites, Take heed to the words of the Most High and allow his spirit to guide your every step. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride, adorned for her husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them and be their God. 